Cheerio gamers, this is Kyle with another episode of Game Time. This is the second part of our uh, at game sort of flashback, uh, taking a look at all these uh, systems here. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description to part one. Be sure to watch that one first. That way you kind of know what's going on here because we're not going to be showing off these. We already did that already in the first part. This part is just going to be gameplay of uh, a few games of each of these flashback systems as well as going to show off all the games that are included. And um, we'll even play some. So, um, but yeah, I, I split the video up. I was going to do uh, all in one, but it got to be a 40 plus minute video. And, um, yeah, it got to be a little long. I was going to do a separate video for each of these, and in hindsight, I probably should have, but uh, I don't know. it's a wasted thing anyway. So, but yeah, I'm not going to waste too much time on introductions, just kind of showing you. Part one was uh, unboxing, showing off the consoles, controllers, what they look like, some of the overlays they came with. So, that's in that one. Gameplay in this video. So, we'll be doing that uh, next here on Game Time. All right, booting up the Atari Flashback model number five. So, um, oh man, this is very reminiscent of my first two videos on, on this particular channel. Uh, yeah, I did a previous channel as well. Just do gameplay. Uh, wasn't very good. Playing on a widescreen, so everything kind of appears a little bit more spread out. I, I was normally using just a normal uh, tube TV previously, so... I'm going to turn up the volume here. Not uh, not a lot of sound here, but let's take a look very quick. Here's the first page of games, notable games on here. I'm just going to point out Adventure, Adventure 2. Uh, Air Sea Battle is kind of fun. Aqua Adventure is uh, a fun one. Asteroids, of course. Astro Blast. Kind of a, a little bit of a combination between asteroids and, and space invaders. You're on a ship... Uh, on the bottom of the screen, you're blasting upwards, but the uh, asteroids will break into pieces and whatnot. One thing with this, too, it, to select a game, you have to kind of just go up and down on the joystick. You can't go left or right, because that takes you to the next page. So if you want to uh, <laughs> get to a game, you're going to have to scroll through them all. So that's page one. Here's uh, page two. Ten more games. Centipede, very fun. Uh, Breakout, of course, classic. So bowling's actually kind of a fun one, too. I really enjoy that. Dodge them, very difficult. There's that dark cavern. We're going to be playing this one here in just a second. Combat games are good. Combat 2. I don't know if the previous flashback contained Combat 2. I'm just, maybe it did. I just uh, kind of forgot that they did a, a second combat game. Circus Atari, very fun. Some of these games uh, really require paddles, so this is more of a paddle game, which if you have the uh, paddle controllers, you can use uh, on these flashback systems because they're the same 9-pin uh, input. Chase It is a, uh, a homebrew game. Earthworld, part of the uh, Earthworld, Fireworld, there was Waterworld, and never released Airworld, a series of adventures. Escape at Another, of course. There's that Fireworld. Escape at Another, uh, homebrew. Football. Frontline, actually very good. I prefer the ColecoVision. I have the ColecoVision version of this one. Prefer that one a little bit better. Millipede, Maze Craze, there's Jungle Hunt, a fun game. We'll see if we can throw that into Haunted House, very fun. Haunted House 2, um, or Return to Haunted House, I believe is original card. You can kind of see the box art here has a, a long name to it. I believe it was a Return to Haunted House. If you're a big fan of Adventure and Adventure 2, it pretty much plays exactly like those. You're that square and you're going around. So you can almost consider it Adventure 3 to some extent. Night Driver is actually a lot of fun. There's a game I was referring to earlier, Miss It, kind of a homebrew game. Very addicting. I'll see if we can show that off to you, just a moment of that. Outlaw is a fun little shooter. Uh, that's a multiplayer shooter. Again, it requires two players, as does the Pong. Uh, lots of sports games here. Save Mary, kind of a fun one. Slot Machine. Strip off. It sounds a lot, uh, a lot better than it really is. <laughs> More of a kind of a, a shooter type game as well. Steeple Chase is kind of fun. Sprint Master. If you like uh, those off-road games, like Super Off-Road, very similar to that. Uh, there's a game called Indy 500 on the Atari. I think that's one of my favorite racing games on the system. For this is basically pretty similar to that. Space Invaders, of course. Super Breakout. 
surrounds a lot of fun. Of course, video checkers, video chess, video pinball. A pretty fun game. I prefer uh, Midnight Magic if you get a chance to find that on the Atari 2600. Definitely a, <clears throat> definitely a better pinball game. And the last two, Wizard and Yar's Revenge. So Let's, uh, yeah, Dark Cavern here. I'll give me just a, like a minute of gameplay here. Kind of your basic maze here. Kind of a fun game. Let's uh, give it a start. So we're this guy. We got a. We have a gun. We can shoot these little uh, enemies here. They shoot back though, so you want to be quick and not do what I did and get shot back. Wait we'll until this one passes. Oh god, dang! Not put on a good show. Those things will take away your ammunition. More guns right there. I mean, it's not safe to get out. All right. I kind of consider it a little bit of a Pac Pac Man game if Pac Man uh, could shoot and we're not collecting any pallets here. Oh, okay. I'm going to get. Spiders will slow. Stop you there, like so. <laughs> the spider's just not moving. Ah, oh, see, it stuck me there. Oh, dear. I didn't mean to do that. Just because I really love this game doesn't mean I'm I'm good at it in the least. I get some ammunition over here. Oh yeah, thanks. They shoot a lot faster than you can shoot. But yeah, that's Dark Cavern there. I know we'll play a little bit better. Let's uh reset. And What other one did I say we we try a little bit of? We'll try to miss it here. This is one of the uh, kind of homebrew games. So I'm this black square, and I'm basically just dodging these uh, multicolored squares that will appear on screen. Gets a lot harder uh, later on. This is one that I can actually do pretty well, believe me or not. So there's another one. There's, there's quite a few, and there'll be smaller squares that will get a lot faster. There'll be bigger squares and everything, so... It's kind of... The easy, uh... The thing you would think would just to stay at the top of the screen. You can dodge them when they come there. Um, and that works pretty well, but eventually it gets a little too chaotic, where you just want to keep moving around in the center of the screen. Like right out there, it's almost kind of... Getting a little tricky just with four squares. So, yeah, you wouldn't think this would be very fun, but uh, yeah, give it a try. It's uh, It will be very time consuming. But yeah, that's basically the Atari 2600 collection. I'm going to get tagged here. So, alright, it's a lot harder just to. There's the red one. There we go. Let's do uh, the Intellivision flashback next. And here's the Intellivision flashback classic game console. Uh, unfortunately, unlike the uh, Atari flashback we've just seen, they don't show the uh, the box art for those games up there. So that's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, it's basically the same setup. Six pages, uh, ten games per page. Armor Battle and Astro Smash, I think, are some highlights there. Auto Racing is pretty fun. Bowling. A fun one. Not as fun as the Atari bowling, in, in my opinion, but... Golf on the Intellivision actually works out pretty well. It's a little little bit to it, but I think uh, it works out pretty well. Brick out. I want to say this is a homebrew game. Like, it wasn't part of the original Intellivision library. It, it pretty much is Breakout from the Atari. Horse racing. Las Vegas roulette. Some learning games. There, I haven't tried these. Math fun. Night Stalker is going to be playing out a lot like that Dark Cavern game uh, that I was playing pretty horribly on the Atari Flashback. Still really fun, though. Really fun. Pinball on the Intellivision, uh, unlike the video pinball on Atari, is actually pretty fun. But I still prefer the game Midnight Magic. Soccer Snafu is actually a lot of fun. We'll probably try that one. Shark Shark. Kind of a, a fun game where you're a fish and you have to eat uh, any fish that's smaller than you. You can uh, essentially eat by running into, but you have to dodge bigger fish as well as the shark. Space Spartan, Space Hawk, lots of space games here. Space Battle, Space Cadet. Sheesh. St 
Stadium mud, mud buggies. This one's uh, interesting. I might have to throw that on just to show it off there. And the last stage there, kind of, kind of uh, some Utopia, Buttender Castle, Tennis, the Tower of Doom, which I believe is a Dungeons and Dragons game. Don't quote me on that one, but if we boot it up, it's going to play a lot like some of those Dungeons and Dragon games. So let's do pinball here. Oh, I totally hit the wrong button. My apologies. <laughs> hit the, there we go. And television pinball. We'll do one. This is where that uh, number pad on the controller is coming handy. So, we'll go down here. Very colorful. I, like I said, I really do like this. One side. Whoop. There's the buttons I was looking for. Probably would help if I play these games just a little bit in advance. I think you get five balls, so we'll just play three here. Well, okay, we'll play one. <laughs> that was kind of a, a BS move. Kind of like the way the uh, gravity works here, too. They didn't really have that going for too much in the video pinball in the Atari flashback, but this game pulls it off pretty well, I think. Yeah, okay, that's cool. That's, uh, what the reset there. That's pinball. I actually really like that. That's a pretty good pinball game. Let's play some Snafu here, and then we'll we'll see what the Cleco has to offer. Here's some Snafu. We'll just do game one. How many rounds? We'll do two rounds. Kind of show it off there. So I'm just going to be this red snake. And you go around and you kind of have to run into other players. Oh, see? Those two ran into each other. And I got blue here pretty good. As long as I can get right to there. There we go. I win. And blue ran into himself. So... That's one round. We'll do one more here. Very fun game. I think you can play this with two players. Oh, okay. Good job. I got yellow pretty well, and blue's going to kind of commit suicide. So long as I can have some space to move. Yep, there we go. Maybe I could have selected a bit of a different, uh, harder difficulty, but yeah, that pretty much shows off. That's actually a really fun game on the Intellivision. Controls very well with that disc. So, there's the Intellivision flashbacks. Man, just a lot of great uh, games in there. Like I said, uh, the bowling is pretty fun. Golf actually works pretty well. Racing. Checkers and chess on here as well. Brickout is pretty much your uh, breakaway type game. So, yeah, tons of fun stuff. On television flashback, highly recommended as well. And last but certainly not least, the ColecoVision flashback. By the way, I did use the same power adapter for all three of these systems and works pretty well. Um, unfortunately, each of the uh, little systems comes with their own audio-visual cables. So, unless you have a TV with multiple inputs, you'll be switching out those AV cables. But, unless you have multiple ones, you can keep them all plugged in and have... 212 games at your disposal. Very similar to the Intellivision then, here with their uh, lineup of games. Alphabet Zoo, Blackjack Poker. So a lot of these, yeah, I just, I don't have or haven't played, so I really like, I, I think this one's the better one of the three, just my own personal opinion, because it does have some great games here. Choplifter and Cosmic Avenger I do have. Very fun games. Highly recommended there. Crown Jewels, I want to say our homebrew games, because I think I booted up that second one, and it said something like 2010, so that's definitely a, a more modern Coleco game. Here's page two of six, ten more games. Page three, oh, Jump Band Jr., if you've seen my episode Game Time 64, I played a little bit of that one on my Commodore 64 plug-in, and uh, plug-and-play, if you will. 
Uh, yeah, I sucked it. <laughs> I still I still don't quite get it. There's Jungle Hunt. Mecha 8, I think, is another homebrew. Minor 2049 are highly recommended. Really like that. Montezuma's Revenge. Yes, I've been talking about it throughout this video and, and previous video. I'm gonna, we're going to play it. Don't worry. Princess Quest is a homebrew game. It actually plays a lot like... Uh, Oh, something like Ghost and Goblin, something like that. Mountain King. Oil's Well. That's a weird one. I don't know. We might throw that one in there just to show how, how weird it is. Space Fury. You gotta have a couple good space games. Come on. Zaxxon. This one's actually from Sega, so I'm glad to see that in there. There's Venture. Very highly recommended. Uh, almost, I want to say, like Zelda. Because you kind of get an overworld at the beginning of the game. You can roll, go around uh, dodging enemies. You can't fight them or anything. But so then you get into these rooms or dungeons. And then you whip out your bow and arrow. And then that's where you fight enemies. And collect a treasure that's in each room. So the heist is in there. Really like the heist. So we might as well do uh, praising it all this time. Montezuma's Revenge. Might as well do that. We'll do it for a minute here. There's my character, so I can kind of go around here. I can jump. Not very well. It's a little, it's a little tricky. I have to dodge uh, the enemies there, kind of on screen, and I want to go and collect treasures for. For some reason, I can't go down. Isn't that great? <laughs> well, that's weird. Hmm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Little bit of Donkey Kong in there. If I got that key, I'll be able to open up one of these doors. I think we want to go this way, though. A little bit of a treasure there. Jump over Mr. Snake. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm going to get him on the way back. A couple good treasures here. A little bit of a pitfall thrown in. Probably gonna take a hit on this one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Let's see what the other room has to offer. Hey, okay, there's where we need some keys, so. We can definitely see uh, definitely some big influences, uh, Donkey Kong, uh, Pitfall, a little bit of those, and I, I absolutely love both those games. So, oh, okay, that's what I, yeah, that that's hard to try to dodge one of those skulls there. Conveyor belts actually, oh, conveyor belts work pretty well. Let's see if I can at least get past this room here. Boy, an addicting game too. I was only going to play a minute or so of it, but yeah, it's a little the. The um, joystick uh, there is kind of a little uh, twitchy, if you will. There we go. That's what I wanted to get. So, there's Montezuma's Revenge. Let's reset there. I think a lot of us know what Jungle Hunt is. Jumpman Jr., I like it, but I... Let's do a uh, Princess Quest. No. Let's see. Cosmic Avengers a lot uh, more of a common Coleco vision. We'll we'll do we will do Princess Quest here in just a moment. We'll play a minute here of this. Let's get in the uh, low times for some reason. I don't know why they they throw that in, but a lot more of an authentic experience. Hmm. 
Alright, there's my ship. You can shoot and drop bombs. A little bit of a TIE fighter. I can move forward on the stick to go faster or I can slow down. It's a bit like a defender, if you will. So that's Cosmic Avenger. Let's, so let's finish up. We'll do that uh, Princess Quest. Like I say, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Ghost and Goblins. Can definitely tell us a little bit more of a modern Coleco too, because ColecoVisions wouldn't have originally had an opening. There it is, like 2012, right there. So, really hard game though, really hard. It's amazing. So there's your character, and look at that—you can throw some spears. So, well, look at this. Right off the bat, you got just a ton of enemies coming. In. I haven't even moved, other than my jumping. Man, it's crazy. Once you get up here, it's kind of hard to see your character. There's that yellow in the background. Makes seeing your character difficult. Yeah, and here's where the enemies come and kind of just ambush you. It's, it's a very difficult game. I mean, I'm used to NES hard, but... Quite an accomplishment. I would love to get this on an actual cartridge on the Coleco Vision, the actual cartridge, so... Seven lives, but yeah, already I'm, I'm ambushed. So, difficult game. If you want a, a really good challenge for the ColecoVision, pick up one of these flashbacks and play the game. So, I'm going to reset here. That will pretty much do it. Thanks, everybody, for watching, subscribing. Uh, share the video if you kind of like what you see. But uh, more importantly than all of that, uh, if you like uh, kind of what you see here, go out and, and support uh, at games and and uh, the people making these flashback systems. I like to see more. I like, kind of like to see a, an Odyssey a 2 flashback. Uh, they obviously done a, a Sega Genesis flashback, um, so I'd kind of like to see them go a little further and do like a Master System flashback. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see maybe, you know, even something based on a computer or a Commodore flashback, anyone? I think that could be pretty awesome. So, but yeah, you know, more importantly than... than than all those uh, liking the videos and stuff. Be sure to go out and if you like what you see, support uh, the guys making them. Right here in the U.S., they are 40 U.S. dollars uh, a piece, so 39.99, 120 for all three of them. I think is a, are actually a really good uh, value for 212 games. So that's definitely uh, yeah under a dollar a game. So um, yeah, I can't I can't. Uh, Speak highly enough of these. I, I like them all. I think they're all great. Uh, they're all faithfully recreated uh, to look like their console counterparts. I love the games that they add in, uh, add with these systems. I feel it's sort of a best of collection, and I love to see more of these in the future with uh, even more games added, a lot more homebrew games thrown in there. They're a lot of fun. We've seen Princess Quest there. That's a lot of fun. Difficult, but fun. And I love to see uh, a cartridge slot added to some of these. Maybe they have some legal issues and whatnot, why they couldn't, but I, I would definitely pay $10 or $20 more for each uh, system in order to be able to play the cartridges on them. I think that would be a lot of fun. So, thanks everybody for tuning in, subscribing, uh, everything. Uh, thumbs up the video to show us support for At Games. So, thanks everybody for tuning in, and we'll see everyone next time. Play more games.